Charlie Baker, four zero five one twenty five U one thirty eight Interrogation of Survivors August nineteen forty one Naval Intelligence Division Admiralty SW one The following report is compiled from information derived from prisoners of war. The statements made cannot always be verified. They should therefore not be accepted as facts unless they are definitely stated to be confirmed by information from other sources. Table of Contents Section 1. Introductory Remarks Section 2. Crew of U-138 Section 3. Early History of U-138 4. Earlier Cruises of U-138 5. Last cruise of U-138 6. Sinking of U-138 7. Details of U-138 Appendix Crew of U-138 Report of interrogation of crew of U-138 sunk at about 11.15 Greenwich Mean Time on Wednesday 18th June 1941, in position 36 degrees north and 8 degrees west. Section 1. Introductory Remarks Prisoners from three U-boats were interrogated simultaneously. These men were from U-138, sunk on 18th June, U-556, sunk on 27th June, and U-651, sunk on 29th June, 1941. It was decided to include in each report only matters pertaining to the U-boat concerned, and to include in the last of these reports all general information obtained from all prisoners. Thus, this report is confined to the information about U-138 only. Section 2. Crew of U-138 The normal complement of U-138 consisted of three officers and twenty-four men, but an additional engineer sub-lieutenant under instruction was carried on the last cruise. There was some criticism of the officers by the men, and a lack of confidence on the part of the captain in the reliability of his crew, many of whom he thought too young and lamentably inexperienced. The senior petty officers considered the officers inefficient and unjustifiably interfering. The whole crew had been lectured at frequent intervals on the subject of security, and just before their departure on their last cruise, they had been paraded to hear a document read out which described the place where they would be interrogated if captured by the British, as well as the process of interrogation and the attendant pitfalls. They were specifically warned not to divulge various items of information. When taken aboard HMS Faulkner after the sinking of U-138, the German captain, Oberleutnant Zersi, Lieutenant Franz Gramitsky, pretended to be a petty officer or raiding, and before being identified, was able to lecture his men and repeat the warnings and orders regarding the attitude to be adopted under interrogation. This subterfuge of Gremitsky's forestalled any hopes of obtaining information from the prisoners still feeling the effects of the depth charge attack. There were some petty officers and ratings with naval experience, but many men had only joined the Navy during the latter half of 1940, and had received very little U-boat training, and were almost useless in the U-boat. Gramitsky, aged 25 years, joined the Navy in 1936, transferred to U-boats in 1938, and was promoted to Leutnant Zersi, or sub-lieutenant, on 1st October 1938. He was stated to have served under Captain Lieutenant Lieutenant Commander Shepke in U-19, the earlier cruises of which are mentioned in 
Charlie Baker, 405119, pages 14 and 15. He was a native of East Prussia and showed some sense of humor. According to his men, he behaved in an extremely democratic manner towards them, frequently getting drunk and going to brothels with them. Though appreciating this camaraderie, the older petty officers felt such behavior to be somewhat undignified. The engineer officer, Oberleutnant, or engineer lieutenant, Harold Wachner, just 26 years of age, was born in Bogota, Colombia, remained there, and joined the Navy in 1936. During his naval training, he visited the Mediterranean, India, and the Far East. He had spent most of his naval career in destroyers. He was quite a pleasant, though somewhat dull individual, despite his travels. His political views were Nazi, but not as extreme as those held by most U-boat officers. The first lieutenant, Leutnant Zersi, sub-lieutenant Gustav Frick, 20 years old, a Westphalian, joined the Navy in 1938. He was an ardent Nazi, very dull, and altogether a somewhat unpleasant person. He had little U-boat experience, having only joined U-138 for her last two cruises. The engineer officer under instruction, Lieutenant Engineer Sub-Lieutenant Ulrich Rickman, aged 22 years, joined the Navy in October 1937. At the outbreak of war, he was drafted, without adequate technical training, to the destroyer Erich Geiss, from which he escaped when she was sunk at the Second Battle of Narvik. He remained at Narvik until the end of June 1940 and was sent to a destroyer base in Germany until ordered to proceed to Lorient, where he joined U-138 for her last cruise. He never had any U-boat training, and had he not been made a prisoner of war, he would have been drafted, still without training, to stand by a new U-boat under construction. Rickman appeared to be completely ignorant of the U-boat branch of the German Navy, and belonged to a better type of naval officer. He was less security conscious than the usual U-boat officer, and also better educated, speaking fair English and some French. As U-138 is believed to have been on a special and possibly dangerous mission, it is interesting to note that of the four officers and 23 men, only two men were married, these being the chief quartermaster and a senior mechanician. While prisoners expressed their appreciation of their treatment in His Majesty's ships, they were extremely resentful at the way in which they were handled by the military, especially during alleged interrogation by army officers. Section 3 Early History of U-138 U-138 was stated to have been built at the Deutsche Werk Kiel. She had a displacement of 300 tons and was one of a series of 300-ton U-boats. This series is believed to include U-137, U-139, U-140, U-144, and U-147. A petty officer claiming to know something of production stated that this series consisted of 15 300-ton U-boats. Prisoners added that U-138 was one of the last U-boats completed by Deutsche Werk Kiel before the firm ceased to build U-boats and concentrated on the building of merchant ships. Prisoners denied all knowledge of the approximate date on which U-138 had been laid down. Members of the crew of U-138 were drafted to stand by during the final stages of construction from about the middle of April 1940 onwards. The captain was Oberleutnant Zersi Wolfgang Luth. The first lieutenant was Oberleutnant Zersi Franz Gramitzki, and the Engineer officer was Oberleutnant, Engineer Lieutenant Brugman. 
the U-boat was said to have been completed on 27th June 1940 and to have proceeded into the Baltic to do trials. She went first to Danzig, then to Gothenhafen, and finally to Memel, where she carried out torpedo practices. After completing her trials, U-138 was said to have been used for training purposes for several weeks. Returning to Kiel at the end of August or early in September 1940. Section 4 Earlier Cruises of U 138. First Cruise of U 138. U 138 was stated to have left Kiel on her first war cruise on a date before the middle of September 1940. It was claimed that she sank by torpedo three ships in a convoy on one day during the hours of daylight and one ship also in convoy on the following day. These four ships were said to have totaled 29,000 tons. The German High Command communique of 23rd September 1940 announced that the small U-boat under Luth's command had shared in the successes announced two days earlier having sunk four merchant ships totaling 29,000 tons. NID Note The ships New Sevilla, City of Simla, and Empire Adventure were sunk between 2025 and 2045 on 20th September 1940 in position 55 degrees 54 north and 7 degrees 24 west and may have been sunk by U-138. No ship was sunk on 21st September 1940 in this area. An unconfirmed statement was made to the effect that U-138 was attacked during this cruise by torpedoes from a British submarine which only just missed. This cruise ended at Lorient, according to prisoners, having lasted about 14 days. Note. A British submarine made an unsuccessful attack on a U-boat on 28th September 1940 in latitude 47 degrees by 31 north and longitude 03 degrees 38 west. Second Cruise of U-138 U-138 was said to have left Lorient on her second war cruise early in October 1940, probably during the second week of that month. Prisoners claimed that all five torpedoes carried were fired and that two tankers totaling 20,000 tons were sunk while a third ship carrying timber was hit and damaged by one torpedo but was missed by another. NID Note SS Blairspey 4,155 tons carrying a cargo of timber was hit by three torpedoes and missed by two about 23.30 on 18th October 1940. Two or more U-boats were known to be operating in this area at this time, and U-138 may have been one of them. Sixteen ships in convoy SC-7 were torpedoed in the same area about this date. One of them was the tanker Thalia, 5,875 tons, sunk on 18th October 1940, in position 57 degrees 27 north and 11 degrees 10 west. This cruise was said to have lasted about 14 days, and U-138 returned to Lorient during the third week of October 1940. On 28th October 1940, the German radio broadcast an announcement that Luth had been awarded the knight insignia of the Iron Cross, having sunk with his small U-boat, twelve armed merchant vessels with a total tonnage of 87,236 tons and a British submarine. These successes, having been achieved partly in the Atlantic, and partly in the North Sea. It is believed that Luth formerly commanded the older 250-ton U-9, in which he carried out several cruises. 
The claims of having sunk 87,236 tons and a British submarine seem to refer to his career in U-9 and probably refer to the North Sea operations of that U-boat. Shortly after U-138 returned to Lorient, Luth left by train for Germany and Captain Lieutenant Perry Lohmeyer took over the command of U-138 temporarily. This was the first occasion on which Lohmeyer had commanded a U-boat. The other officers were still Gramitsky and Brugerman. U-138 remained about two weeks at Lorient, according to prisoners. Third Cruise of U-138 U-38 was said to have left Lorient early in November 1940 on her third war cruise, which was uneventful and lasted about four weeks, and during which the U-boat sank nothing, although she remained in her patrol area for a long time. One steamer was said to have been sighted but escaped. Prisoner's statements to the effect that U-138 arrived in Kiel at the end of November 1940, that Luth's U-boat had returned to her base. Prisoners said that U-138 went to the Deutsche Werke on her arrival in Kiel. The entire complement was entertained at the Colonial Schule at Flensburg, an institution for the training of women as wives of the future colonists when Germany will have acquired colonies again. Lohmeyer and the engineer officer left the U-boat, the latter being succeeded by Oberleutnant Schultz. Prisoners stated that U-138 remained in Kiel until the end of December 1940, when she proceeded to Gottenhafen, under the command of the first lieutenant Gramitsky. The only other officer on board was the engineer officer. At Gottenhafen, she arrived in time for the new year. The crew lived in the Weichsel, the depot ship of the U-boat training flotilla. U-138 was attached to the second training division, to ULD, and was used as a training U-boat until late in March 1941. Practice dives were carried out during this period. At the end of March, U-138 was stated to have proceeded to Memo for about eight days for torpedo practice. Here the crew lived in the Nordland. No instructor was on board U-138 and the torpedo practices were carried out just outside Memo, the target being a large ship. Schultz was succeeded by Oberleutnant Harold Walkner and Leutnant Zersi. Gustav Frick was appointed first lieutenant. U-138 was stated to have left Memel shortly before Easter, and after returning to Gottenhafen to fetch the crew's gear, spent Easter Sunday, 13th April 1941, in the Baltic, arriving soon afterwards at Kiel. Stores and torpedoes were then loaded in readiness for U-138's fourth cruise. U-140 was apparently also in Kiel preparing to put to sea, and orders were received that the first of the two U-boats to be ready should leave immediately. Fourth Cruise of U-138 Prisoners stated that U-138 left Kiel on her fourth cruise about 21st April 1941, passed through the Kiel Canal in company with another small U-boat. Two days after leaving Brunsbüttel, piston trouble occurred, according to prisoners, the oil having become overheated. It appears that the pistons became very hot through friction. The U-boat was said to have dived immediately and to have carried out repairs while lying on the bottom. Prisoners said that she remained submerged for 48 hours and that on surfacing it was observed that the exhaust valves had become defective. Therefore, U-138 put into Bergen. She was escorted into Bergen Fjord by one minesweeper. U-138 was said to have been delayed 
for about three weeks waiting for a spare part to come from Germany for the repairing of the defective exhaust valves. The work was carried out by German workmen. During their stay, some of the crew went on an excursion to Nordheimsund by motor bus and nearly had a serious accident on the journey which they attributed to attempted sabotage. Prisoners claimed to have seen one 500-ton U-boat in Bergen. On leaving Bergen before the middle of May 1941, U-138 was said to have been escorted by one minesweeper for a short time. The U-boat carried, as usual, five torpedoes. She was stated to have passed south of the Shetlands. One prisoner stated that the U-boat passed submerged through a gap in the line of mines stretched between two islands. He added that this gap was guarded on each side. The only event of interest on the cruise was stated to have been the sinking of a ship variously described as a tanker or a freighter and as having had a displacement of 8,000 to 12,000 tons. The date was given as 18th May 1941. Prisoners added that other ships were in the vicinity further away and that one or two destroyers were present. U-138 was described as having proceeded underwater and to have fired three torpedoes from periscope depth, of which one or even two hit the target. NID Note No ships were reported to have been torpedoed and sunk on 18th May 1941 in any area in which U-138 could have been operating. It was claimed that two convoys were sighted later on the cruise, but that U-138 could not get within range. Prisoners said that they heard explosions of aircraft bombs in the distance. The approximate date of arrival at Lorient was given as 28th May 1941. U-138 was said to have lain off the former arsenal, now renamed the Salzwedel Barracks, during her stay in Lorient, except for a short time when she had to charge her batteries. Prisoners added that torpedoes were brought in a lighter to the U-boat, and she did not proceed to a torpedo depot. Among other U-boats at Lorient was U-556, Captain Lieutenant Herbert Wolfarf. Section 5 Last cruise of U-138. Prisoners stated that U-138 left Lorient on 12th June 1941 on her fifth and last cruise. In addition to her normal complement, she carried an engineer sub-lieutenant under instruction. It was stated that the U-boat had three torpedoes in her tubes and two spares in the forward compartment. Prisoners denied that mines were carried. From the diary of one of the officers, it was established that U-138 had a special duty to perform, but only the captain knew the nature of this task, and he would not divulge any information. Other officers ridiculed the suggestion that they might have intended getting into the Mediterranean. After some discussion, it appeared that their main reason for denying the Mediterranean suggestion was that such a course would have encroached upon the Mediterranean sphere of operations. They became confused when it was pointed out that they were sunk and had presumably been operating in what was admittedly also the Italian U-boat area. They did not deny that U-138 had some special task but professed complete ignorance of the nature of this. They believed that the captain may have had sealed orders from the Admiral U-boats, but may not have opened them by the time U-138 was sunk. One prisoner voiced vague suspicions about the possible intentions of sinking a British aircraft carrier, but did not really possess any actual knowledge. According to a further statement, U-138 was to relieve another U-boat patrolling in that area. 
by piecing together various remarks and admissions, some indications of U-138's object were obtained. It was established that Gramitsky knew some details before leaving Lorient, as he dropped vague hints to the crew about going to a warmer climate. After leaving, harbor charts of the Mediterranean and Gibraltar were produced, and the crew were told that the Admiral U-boat's orders had included an injunction to proceed slowly but surely and to make every effort to return. It was stated that the Spanish agency had reported HMS Renown, HMS Furious, and a second aircraft carrier in Gibraltar. According to one petty officer, U-138 was to proceed at night fairly close inshore along the coast of the Bay of Arcaceras and to enter Gibraltar Harbor from the north, remaining on the surface across the minefield where mines were believed to have been laid at a depth of 20 feet. It appears that failing renown, furious, or the second aircraft carrier, they were to torpedo any ship from a cruiser upwards, but nothing smaller than a cruiser. One petty officer stated that ships in Gibraltar had riding lights, and that the Germans did not anticipate any great difficulty in locating their victims. If U-138 could not escape after her attack on the British ships, the crew was to scuttle her and try to swim to Spanish territory, where they expected to be fitted out with civilian clothing and to be sent back to Lorient or to Germany. During this cruise, the U-boat spent much time on the surface, but nevertheless dived on several occasions when aircraft were reported. An entry in a diary for Tuesday, 17th June 1941, stated that the crew was in a state of suspense, as U-138 was nearing her destination and the carrying out of her special task. It was stated that U-138 could have attempted her attack a day or two earlier, but that the captain, bearing in mind the instructions to be slow and sure, was taking his time. Prisoners stated with apparent sincerity that they sank no ships on this cruise, nor did they sight any merchant ships. Section 6. Sinking of U-138 At dawn on 18th June 1941, a man on watch saw a dark shape in the sector astern and to port. The shape came nearer, and all the lookouts strained to make out what was approaching. Suddenly, the Germans decided that it was a cruiser and crash-dived. The captain ordered the crew to don their escape apparatus. As he spoke, the U-boat was at a depth of 40 meters, 131 feet, when three depth charges exploded very close and caused extensive damage. Broken glass and pieces of wrecked gear seemed to be everywhere, and water came pouring in from a number of leaks. Tools and spare parts were scattered by the explosions. The oil consumption gauges were smashed, and the bursting of a bottle containing compressed air caused excess pressure inside the U-boat. Neither the main pumps nor the hand pumps would work, and the water entered the exhaust which had apparently been inadequately repaired at Bergen on the previous cruise. The port electric motor ceased to function, but the starboard electric motor was still running, and the lighting system did not fail. According to prisoners, the U-boat sank on two occasions to a depth of about 210 meters, or 689 feet. The presence of chlorine became increasingly oppressive. There were still 50 kilograms of compressed air available. U-138 rose to a depth of about 30 meters, or 98.4 feet, and would have attempted to torpedo the cruiser, but for the fact that everything in the U-boat was flooded and the pumps could not be made to work. The U-boat went down by the bow 
and then by the stern alternately as water rushed from one end of the boat to the other, but later the U-boat went down markedly by the bow. Prisoner stated that two further depth charges were dropped near U-138. The Germans considered that the batteries must have been almost exhausted by being run continuously in the effort to keep the submerged U-boat horizontal while more and more water entered. After a period estimated by prisoners as anything from 30 minutes to 1 hour, U-138 was obliged to surface, was fired on by the British and the crew abandoned ship. When the conning tower hatch was opened, the captain was ejected by the air pressure in the U-boat. The Germans complained that after they were already swimming in the sea, the cruiser, which they now recognized as a destroyer, dropped further depth charges. Prisoners believed that the British had wrongly assumed that other U-boats were present. The entire complement was picked up by HMS Falknor. The German officers seemed to have no knowledge of the use of scope of Asdix and to have thought that Falknor's attack had been carried out as a result of having seen U-138's periscope and with the intention of frightening the Germans. In fact, U-138's periscope was not sighted by Faulkner, who made contact and attacked by Asdix with a single pattern of six depth charges set to 100, 150, and 250 feet. An attack was carried out later by Forrester after the U-boat had surfaced, charges being dropped alongside the hull. The petty officer telegraphist was of the opinion that the British electric rays were effective only to a depth of 100 meters, 328 feet, and became dispersed at a greater length. The engineer officer professed to attribute the loss of the U-boat to surprise in bad visibility, but a petty officer believed that she had been located by radio direction finding. Most prisoners stated that the U-boat was scuttled, but others said that this was not necessary as she was rapidly filling with water when they abandoned ship and was obviously about to sink. Some prisoners believed that the maximum depth to which British depth charges could be set was 170 meters, or 558 feet. Prisoners admitted that when U-138 was sunk, they had not reached their objective or carried out their special task. Prisoner said that had Gramitsky succeeded, he would have received the knight insignia of the Iron Cross. Normally this decoration is awarded only when a U-boat captain has sunk at least 100,000 tons of shipping, or has carried out some notable feat. It is known that Gramitsky claimed to have sunk only about 12,000 tons of shipping, and the fact that he would have received the decoration mentioned above is a further indication of the objective having been an important one. Prisoners added that U-138 was expected to have returned early in July. Section 7. Details of U-138. General Remarks. U-138 had a displacement of 300 tons. She had three bow tubes and carried five torpedoes on each of her war cruises. It was stated that she was one of the last U-boats to be built by the Deutsche Werk Kiel before this firm ceased to build U-boats. She was armed with one 20mm machine gun. A notebook taken from a mechanician second class gave the following dimensions. Length overall 44 meters. 144.35 feet. Length of pressure hull, 30 meters, 98.42 feet. Draft forward, 3.6 meters, 11.81 feet. Draft amidships, 4 meters, 13.12 feet. The complement was usually three officers and 24 men, but an additional officer under instruction was carried on the last cruise. The officers and men lived in the forward compartment, 
which was not subdivided in any way. The next compartment was the control room and contained on the starboard side a small space used as the wireless telegraph and listening cabin. Aft of the control room came the galley, then the engine room, and the after compartment housed four men of the engine room personnel. Prisoner stated that no special precautionary measures had been taken with the two top rows of plating on the hull in order to render them less vulnerable to bombs or gunfire. It was stated that a rubber raft or dinghy was not carried. The main difference between the 300-ton type U-boats and the earlier 250-tonners was said to be the fact that the former were fitted with saddle tanks. This increased their endurance to about four or even five weeks. Engines, motors, and speeds. U-138 was stated to have had two diesels of 350 horsepower each built by Motorenwerke Mannheim MWM and two Siemens electric motors. Prisoners said there was a direct engagement clutch between diesels and the motors and between the motors and the shaft. U-138 speeds were given as follows. Emergency full speed on surface, 14 knots. Utmost speed on surface, 13 knots. Cruising speed on surface, 8 to 9 knots. Economic cr cruising speed when proceeding on surface to patrol area, 8 knots. Utmost speed submerged, about 7 to 8 knots. Speed submerged, usually about 2 knots. Dead slow, less than 1 knot. A mechanician estimated that the motors did about 200 revolutions when the U-boat crash-dived. Compartment Spacing From a notebook of one of the survivors of U-138, a 300-ton U-boat, the compartment spacing appears to be stern compartment, end-to-frame 15 and a half, motor room, e mash, frame 15 and a half to frame 24, diesel room, diesel room, frame 24 to frame 38 and a half, control room, zentrale, frame 38 and a half to frame 47 and a half, living room, one room, frame 47 and a half to frame 66 and a half, bow torpedo compartment, bog torpedo room, frame 66 and a half to frame end. Batteries. Prisoners stated that two batteries were carried and that these were stowed forward and each had 62 cells each of which was in a hard rubber container, the cells being ventilated individually. Tanks. Prisoners stated that U-138 had one forward and one after trimming tank, three internal diving tanks, and a pair of saddle tanks, the latter capable of being used for additional oil fuel. Wireless Telegraph Aerial Prisoners said that the wireless telegraph aerial was brought through the deck alongside the conning tower and into the wireless telegraph office. Diving depth. The guaranteed diving depth was said to have been 150 meters, 492 feet, but U-138 was stated to have gone, obviously involuntarily, to 210 meters, 689 feet, twice during the attack by HMS Faulkner. The depth gauge was marked to read to a depth of 200 meters, or 66 feet, and prisoners claimed that U-138 had a second, smaller depth gauge, which measured depths greater than 200 meters. From this aspect of the conversation, the impression was gained that diving to any great depth was no usual event. Fuel Stowage U-138 was said to have been able to carry 38 to 40 tons of oil fuel and 100 kilograms of lubricating oil. Appendix List of Crew of U-138 By Name, Rank, English Equivalent, and Age, etc. Listing Officers, 4 Petty Officers, 11 Men, 12 Total, 27